Wolves raised as dogs begin exhibiting strange behavior as they grow up. You don't need to bring a wolf into your house to know that they're a bit different from dogs. Sure, the two species share a common ancestor and yeah, okay, they share a genetic connection too. Heck, many dogs even look strikingly similar to modern-day wolves. Still, no one's checking out the Wolfminster Wolf Show. But experts recently conducted a study in which they observed the behaviors of wolves raised by humans, you know, the norm for their dog counterparts. While the results confirm wolves and dogs are indeed very different, other evidence suggested their similarities might be even more important than we realize. One study conducted from DNA found in Siberia suggests there are at least 27,000 years between the modern-day dog and wolf. Despite similar appearances, it's clear that at some point the evolutionary paths of both animals diverged. While dogs still have lupine instincts, it wasn't known until recently how dog-like wolves really are. Wolves actually fear humans, and they avoid territory occupied by them. They're also far more independent than their domesticated counterparts despite their pack-like mentality. For example, when wolf packs go hunting, the pups are often left alone to learn to take care of themselves. Dorotya Ujvalusi from Iotos Loran University in Hungary was more interested in the similarities between the two animals, though. For example, both wolves and dogs like to greet each other by licking the other's faces. Similarly, both dogs and wolves can understand certain human gestures like pointing fingers, something chimps actually struggle to understand. Ujvalusi conducted a study that analyzed the characteristics exhibited by wolves that were raised by human caregivers. Ten gray wolf pups participated, seven females and three males, all of which were raised by humans and lived in captive packs. The pups started the program when they were only four to six days old and were assigned to a foster parent. They spent 22 to 24 hours a day in close contact with their caregiver and were socialized in a domestic way. For the first four to six weeks, the pups were carried in pouches. Later, they were leash trained so they could be exposed to domestic social situations, like encountering human strangers, novel objects, and urban settings. They were also socialized with their litter mates several times per week. After about one year of care, the wolves were assimilated back into a wolf pack environment. All the while, scientists made some remarkable observations and concluded there was one common dog like trait observed in all the wolves. The common trait? Wolves who associated nurture with a human exhibited a unique attachment to their specific caregiver. There was an evident level of trust and companionship prominent between the pair. Royal Society Open Science published this research on June 27, 2017, which concluded not only did wolves express a connection to their human caregiver, but these feelings lasted through the animal's adulthood, even if they still retained their inherent sense of fear towards humans. Such observations led researchers to believe the common ancestor of dogs and wolves may have actually been open to human companionship, leading to the evolution of the friendlier, cuddlier ancestor, the dog that we all know and love. Upon further observation of the behavior between wolf and human, it was noted that when socializing, wolves approached a human similarly to the way they would approach a member of their pack. This would include contact-seeking and submissive behavior. Wolves approach their human caregiver with lowered body posture and lowered ears and low wagging tail. They would also display face-to-face -face oriented licking, jumping and pawing, usually followed by a leaning or rubbing nudging motion on the human. Catherine Lord of the University of Massachusetts Medical School stated, This result is exciting, not because wolves are more social than we thought, but because it's a step in uncovering the complexities of the differences between dogs and wolves and how they interact with humans. Learning the key differences between wolves and dogs can only help us further understand the ancestral lineage and evolutionary divergence that led to the wolf and dog species we know today. Like any thorough scientific study, there were a number of other observations and conclusions made. Perhaps the most important one, though, was that as much as wolves have the capacity to connect with humans, they're not domesticated animals. They're still wild by nature, and they're still an entirely different species than dogs, even if raised by humans. This means that people should not try to domesticate wild wolves or wolf pups. The problem starts when people disregard the advice of professionals and mistake wolves for dogs, keeping them as pets. Ujfalusi said, 
This is a serious welfare issue for wolves as 99% of those animals will eventually be given up and usually euthanized. This is especially true when wolves are taken out of their natural habitats to live with humans. Moreover, studies of a dog's brain prove that they are truly happier around us, even more than when they are around other dogs. Humans reduce stress in dogs, yet that is not the case with wolves. This research was quite groundbreaking. What we learned from our study is that while dogs may be more attached to their human caretaker in the sense of dependence and using their owners as a secure base, Ujfalusi said, wolves are also able to form lasting affiliative relationships with their caretakers, though without a sense of dependence. Ujfalusi's final note was, basically wolves are wild animals, more independent, hard to control, hard to manage, and health-keeping conditions are impossible to provide in the human home. Thus, tame wolves kept as pets are a real danger to their environment and to themselves.